Hi friends, today I'm going to cover IAS based architecture with high availability. If you have gone through my previous video, which is on the IAS architecture, you might have got to know like how to use the VMs and the various features in the architecture. So here it is under the software cloud architecture. Under this, you have this videos you can check here. Uh, let us dive into our topic now. So in my previous video, I have walked through the various uh, parameters which are really required for your Azure architecture design and implementation. So these are the few parameters you can go through my previous video to understand and also have walked through what are the different features you can use for different purposes as part of the Azure IAS architecture. So today's topic is getting the high availability and also how to survive in the disaster recovery. So high availability and disaster recovery are the key parameters and the base areas for any architecture or for any interview or for any discussion. Without that, the topic doesn't end. So high availability is like how you can make your applications highly available, possibly 24 by 7 or you know 99.9% .9 SLS. Disaster recovery is something like how will you recover when the unexpected incidents or accidents or some disaster occurs in the region where you have hosted your servers. So that is basically like you recover all your applications probably you have a different type of strategies anyway let us see rtu and rpu are the two different parameters to consider what is going to be your approach for high availability and disaster recovery so rpu is like recovery point of objective for example your applications are running like up to what level your business will sustain even after losing the data for example if i have data backups like one hour uh, until one hour before or one day before can my business sustain still sustain or i have to have each and every piece of the data which is actually stored in my main database so that is actually a recovery point of objective some businesses can sustain even after losing one day data or two days data so based on that you can also uh, reduce your uh, cost when you are defining a strategy or implementing the strategy so the next one is rto recovery time of, or time of objective like maximum tolerable length of downtime how much time it can sustain your business can sustain like okay even if it is down for one day can it sustain or it cannot take it even one hour downtime so that is all depends like uh, based on the rpos and rtos you will define and even the cost also will get increased based on based on the uh, tolerance level of your application in case if you can't tolerate uh, downtime of 15 minutes then automatically you have such kind of back-end mechanisms and then even if you can't uh, sustain uh, or tolerate cannot tolerate uh, of losing the data of 15 minutes uh, then you have to definitely invest a lot more than the regular uh, strategies so to define your strategies these are the main things you need to consider like find define applications to enable ha and dr business impact analysis and set rpo and rto so moving on, these are the uh, different options available. As I mentioned, like based on the model or based on the type of tolerance you can you, your business can take, you can consider one of these options. So for example, if you are on the infrastructure as a service and you're taking Azure VMs, then you have availability sets. Then the next level of, uh, of increasing the high availability, like increasing where SLA is availability zones, then auto scaling. Also, you should have some kind of failover mechanism. What if the VM1 gets failed, then automatically you should have VM2 in place so that, you know, it can uh, uh, have the failover mechanism so that, you know, your application won't go down. Then next one is levels of HA and DR. These are the four different levels. As I mentioned earlier, based on the criticality of your business, you can define low, medium, warm standby or host standby. So, for example, if it is kind of Amazon or Flipkart type of businesses, definitely it will fall under the host standby because even few minutes of the downtime will cause million dollars of loss for them. 
especially during the Thanksgiving Day or some kind of festival offers, it will really cause big loss for them. So that is the reason, you know, such kind of uh, applications will definitely look for the hot standby with, you know, no losing the data and also the very few minutes of uh, standby time, like, you know, they, they have to recover from any type of disaster or the downtime. Uh, then if the business uh, is such, can sustain, like if you are maintaining ca some kind of timesheets or, you know, or some kind of HR uh, related operations, then you can consider it is as a medium or warm standby so that, you know, it doesn't impact much. But yeah, there will be definitely impact. But still, you know, you can sustain more than that. You can save the cost by using medium or warm standby. Similarly, uh, low in case if your application is very simple or your customer application is very simple and they are not at all worried about uh, down few hours downtime or even they're not worried about, uh, about losing few hours of data, then you can go with the low. Definitely, the cost will be very, very low compared to any other model in the HA and DR uh, strategies. So, as I mentioned, no fault isolation, but 99.9% .9 SLA, <clears throat> which can be the uh, downtime of few hours, and even the data can be lost for few hours. That is the 99.9% SLA, which is low. So, coming to the next one, uh, it can tolerate 15 minutes, then you can uh, say fault isolation and racks and storage you can consider. So, your while you're configuring your VMs, you can configure that in the different racks and uh, you can also have a storage for the backup so that you can, you can uh, retain as soon as possible. Uh, then warm standby, it can tolerate up to five minute, uh, 15 minutes. Then within less than 15 minutes, you can just recover from that. Uh, but medium will go 15 minutes to one hour. Uh, so it comes like 99.9% SLA. Hot standby is real time. So almost like you are replicating two environments so as soon as this first environment is down immediately your second environment will be up automatically that means almost real time the cost also will be in the same way uh, so based on the business you can decide these are the things you should know or you should understand as a admin or as an architect definitely architect should understand very clearly what are these strategies going to be so moving on I just brought some picture to make you understand in case if you are going to take Azure VM as a single instance then it will still give you 99.9% .9 SLA. In case if you are going to take uh, uh, availability sets that means availability sets are like you can enable on the Azure VMs like availability sets that means it is the one VM is going to sit one, on one rack space the other VM is going to sit on the other rack space that means you will have to if you are t taking two VMs then one uh, is on the other rack, one rack space. Then because of the uh, network failure or some power outage of that particular rack, still your second server is running. That means the SLA is automatically increased by 99.95%. In case, if you want to go with the multiple availability zones, like each region have uh, uh, three regions. So you, you can host one VM in availability zone 1 and second one on availability zone 2 third one is under availability zone 3 so that even if the whole availability zone uh, is down still your second uh, uh, machine or second vm is still on uh, in the data center you are just hosting all the missions in the same uh, availability zone but in the different rack spaces uh, coming to the reason page like you can set it up one uh, one region one data center the second region have another data center so that if one particular region is completely down the second region is still on so that you don't have any downtime facing here uh, within the reason you are going with the availability zones here you are just taking out that particular data center to the completely different uh, region so that your availability is uh, f far far high that means almost real time as i mentioned the fourth strategy so let us move on to the architecture. So as I mentioned, like you, the same architecture, exactly the same architecture, but only difference is like you are making a replication. So you will have the geo replication of your SQL server. You always, it will sync the data to the uh, other SQL server. So there is no, uh, the, the, there is no gap between the data so every minutes or every second uh, that will sync continuously to the other SQL server. Similarly, you also have to have some mechanism 
to replicate and take the backups or you know to continuously replicate this vms to the other region this is this is completely standby region uh, which is actually syncing with this and taking the continuous backups and restore or recovery points also the sql server will also work on the geo replication as i mentioned earlier in case if your business can sustain for long hours like such as 3 4 hours you can simply take this backup through the recovery vault rather than you know creating a standby region simply you can take the backup of your vm to the blob storage you can take the backup of your sql server to the blob storage which is going to be really low cost uh, and the blob storage can be like jrs or grs geo uh, replications or uh, zone replications all those things can be enabled so that you know your backup data will uh, not go anywhere so you can take like one hour uh, backups or like a few hours every few hours backups and then whenever the server is down you can simply uh, take this uh, replica or sorry uh, the backup versions and then restore your vms and you can restore your sql server as well so that you not you are not spending too much money on your uh, restoring mechanism uh, so that is one way of doing the second way is like if you are if you don't have the sustainability of your business then you can go with the standby reasons let me just show you uh, the site recovery so you can simply ser search for the site recovery here or recovery service walls then and create that after creating that you can see here my recovery service walls i have one here under this you can see whether you want to just simply backup your few vms or you can uh, you want to just do a site recovery then you have to do a replicate application manage recovery plans uh, there are a lot of options available then whatever the protected items like uh, it is already backed up or replicated items will be shown here i don't have any backup uh, items or i don't have any replicated items here so but yeah you can define you can also define the backup infrastructure and even if your uh, uh, machines or infrastructure or data center is on the other clouds you can still uh, execute your backup and uh, recovery mechanisms through this recovery uh, service walls even on the on premises data centers so you can also check the documentation of this here in this url you can check about uh, site recovery uh, there are plenty of options like site recovery service and backup service and then what it does uh, based on your business continuity and the disaster recovery solution I and mean the plan you can uh, go through these options available as your vm replication on premises vm replication workload replication there are plenty of options available i already mentioned about the rto and rpo targets so you can go through that and uh, it also gives you uh, the step by step uh, uh, creation of those uh, infrastructure stuffs so you can see here set up disaster recovery for your azure vms it is given step by step like simply you need to create say, recovery service vault under that so hope it will be helpful for you and i'm also going to post uh, the url to download this presentation in the disc youtube description please down feel free to download that thanks for watching my videos